All right, so welcome back. Now we're at the section where we're going to look at bone anatomy and especially also now muscular anatomy of the mouth uh, area. So what I've got in front of us here are three sketches, pretty obviously very large piece of paper. And I've pulled out the lens so you can see all of them. So as I'm going through bone and muscle anatomy through here, I can give you three different views. I've got a three-quarter uh, facing left view, and I've done all these sketches from the skull. Uh, I'm going to have reference images for you uh, on uh, in this video, either at the back or the front. I haven't decided yet. You'll see them there. I'll let you know. Um, and you can draw from those if you don't have a skeleton to put this together. Or uh, I'm going to pop up this image. I've already popped it up before this video, this section of the video runs, so you can actually lay in this sketch. We've got a three-quarter front. We've got a full right, full frontal view here to the left, and then we've got a profile view uh, as well. So I've got three different views to show you when I'm putting muscles onto the um, uh, skull structure, and specifically that help with uh, typically the mouth uh, area. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So you want to, uh, I suggest doing all three of these sketches on a piece of paper of your choosing. My students you'll use probably Progresso pencil or charcoal, um, but anybody else you can use uh, certainly what you want there in YouTube land. And then, excuse me, um, we're going to now put these these forms and structures onto our skeletal model to get a good sense of, of what is underneath and making some of these, these uh, forms that, um, quite frankly, make up the, the mouth area. All right, so let's start in through here. We've, uh, and we'll start three quarter here and you'll jump over. One thing I wanna show you is this muzzle structure of the mouth uh, before I lay in too much more. And I did, I laid these all in to save us a little bit of time, quite frankly. Um, is this round, here's the ball area here. Here's the ball area over here in profile. You can see it fitting through the maxilla area, this structure right in through here, right in through here in the larger ball area of the mouth. And then also in a front view, see how it goes about halfway, feeling about halfway through. I just kind of transfer this height over through about halfway through the nasal cavity, the septal area, about right here and right here, coming all the way through, and it ends about halfway through the eye orbit in through here. And then on the profile view, it actually goes back. Look how wide it goes back in this view. It actually gets overlapped a little bit by the anterior part of the mandible, this U-shaped section in through, in through there. So I just wanted to, to relate that to you. Let's go ahead and start in on on some of the um, muscles in a repeat of the bones. We know the nasal cavity, the nason, the zygomatic arch is gonna play a role um, in this area, as well as the frontal prominence and also the superciliary arch in through here. The maxilla is gonna play a role and then we'll get into a little bit of where these muscles start, where they're going to be attaching through along this ridge in through here. And certainly the lower part of the, the mouth of the mandible area will be will come into play uh, as well. So pretty complex little area, exciting little area to get a lot of different expressions with human form and the mouth and uh, happiness, sadness, glee, joy, depression, anger. There's so many little muscles and quite frankly I'm eliminating some because they don't necessarily make landmarks of, of the face. So we're going to start in um, and I'm going to start in with a review of a couple here, and then we're going to, these should be newer to you as well. And I'm going to draw them uh, more in black. The first one we're going to start with is, you should know this one already, is the masseter. And it, it is that major jaw muscle right here that attaches along underneath here in the zygomatic arch, comes down and fulfills itself out in through here. It, leaves a little bit off the mandible to the side, so I'll, I'll put it, start to put it in through here, up and over, very massive jaw muscle, aids in chewing through here, lays on top of, underneath the zygomatic arch in through here, 
and then over the mandible coming down and through here we have that masseter form right in through here very nicely putting in I'll give a little bit of tone in through here so it lays in through here profile three-quarter we'll see it here attaching over like so okay, it can kind of bulge out especially when you're chewing gum or you're talking it can get sore when you talk too much like I talk way too much right all the time students here at NKU are definitely shaking their heads for sure yes and maybe you think that YouTube lamp uh, in it over here now in profile or, or frontal view we'll see that master we've seen this already in head anatomy remember that so we're reviewing that a little bit this will bulge out a little bit just to touch in wider and larger men for the most part this will come down and over like so get a little bit tweaked thinner down at the bottom and through in through here a little bit there we go so there's your masseter masseter muscle right in through right in through there right now <clears throat> the idea here is to be able to practice it and it's this and know this from memory and the way you do that is just draw a lot use photo reference when you need to uh, but when you learn it you can practice it from memory and you just draw it and like just kind of whip it out like I do but that comes at a lot of training so don't think that I can just do this willy-nilly and easily this took some years of kind of putting this to memory in good usage so there's your master so the next form I want to show you is called the buccinator that's a pretty cool name for a muscle, I think. And it falls in through here. Now, these are this muscle is not necessarily attached onto the teeth, but in the cheek area, we see it fill in this gap a little bit in through here. Maybe I'll start with profile a little bit in through here. And we see it fill this gap underneath here. This also aids in chewing and mastication, and it fills in, bulges in through here right in through here this is the buccinator b-u-c-c-i-n-a-t-o-r it's, it's kind of a kind of a real strong kind of name really fun fun to to say buccinator in through here and i'm not really going to go in this video into teeth the teeth area so much we'll do that in the sections coming up a little bit so Here's the buccinator right in through here in a, in a profile view. Have that like so. You can see that. Through down, contour this a little bit. Masseter muscle. I'm not going to label these to take up more time. You can go look them up in your anatomy books, whichever you prefer. There's a lot of good ones out there for artistic anatomies. So we have the the masseter here and we have the buccinator buccinator here now coming through this gap in through here and over right okay coming through and over and about inside now this is inside the cheek now because there's a space if you open your mouth you can put your if you want put your finger in there and feel there's a space in between your teeth and your gum right or, or your gums and your teeth and that gap between of air and then the inside anatomy of your of your muscles and that's what we're that's what we're doing so we're not attaching it right to the teeth that would be that would be wrong so buccinator here and downwards okay fills in right in through here and you're gonna find there's a little absence of muscle form in this jaw or bone area but right in through here right in through here and right in through uh, here as well okay so let's fill this buccinator in a little bit. There's a gap in through here. Now we're some of these gaps are filled with flesh, fat, fibrous tissue, glands, etc. So there's there is a filling in of all that fascia. Fascia is kind of um, I kind of think of fascia. All our all our muscle forms were wrapped in a kind of a tight wrapping. I didn't know that until years after I. I had studied some anatomy and, and then kind of restudied it and became even more masterful at it was this idea of 
fascia coating, everything. So that tightens their muscle forms, keeps them solid together. Right in through there, so give that a smoothness a little bit if you want. Through here. So we have the masseter now, masseter, buccinator, masseter, buccinator, masseter, buccinator sitting in through here now. And in frontal view, it kind of it looks more rounded. One thing you can do is take all of these muscles, what I've done in the past to learn them, is to take them out and draw them on their own. And, and they come up with these weird little geometric kind of shapes. I almost think of them as chewing gum, kind of fibrous chewing gum or taffy. If you, those of you that are not American, if you know what taffy candy is, it's kind of a gummy candy, but their muscles are kind of like that. They're very flexible and kind of rubbery. And if you can learn them by separating them out, also even, that becomes pretty important too. That means that you take them out of the skeleton of the, the skull, etc., and then you figure out what their small little form is. It's a pretty powerful little, little thing to, uh, to learn. Okay, so we have now the buccinator and we have the masseter here. I'll kind of separate them a little bit. And through here, and through here, and then obviously up in through here. All right, so we have that. So those are the first two. The next grouping are what I call the five pulleys. So I'm going to write that down to um, the five pulley muscles. That means they're acting as pulleys or levers elevators or levators, you're going, to, you're going to see the Latin on that in a minute, of what they do. Now, they, all of them, I'm just going to start rattling them out, the uh, levator superioris in what I'm going to call the late levator labi superioris nasalis or alike nasali, um, I think it's nasalis is better, so levator labi superioris nasalis originates right up in here, then cascades down the side of the nason bone, zygomatic arch, and attaches right over and through here. And that's good. All of these muscles are going to help pull the lips up, out, and smiling, and quirky expressions on both sides. Just remember, both these muscles, all these, all these we're doing, I'm just going to do one side for a time. You can fill in on the other side. But we're using this... Um, in a parallel kind of, uh, definitely way, I mean it's not a kind of way, it is a parallel kind of, kind of expression and attitude. So just remember that, that these are very much all parallel, aligned, and on what is going on on one side happens on, on the other two as well, okay? So we have the levator labi superioris nasalis, coming down through here. It's a strand. I'll draw them in a moment. Then we have the, uh, there's, a, there's a muscle underneath he, here, the levator anguli oris, a small little muscle that attaches here, that, that attaches here and then ends about right here. Then on top of that, <laughs> it's going to get complex, is the levator labi superioris. Next to it, over through here, is the zygomatic minor muscle. Put, now think about the zygomatic, zygomaticus minor muscle. Think about the zygomatic arch. So the zygomaticus minor muscle originates, starts here, and slinks down over through here. Then the zygomatic major over here follows through here. And these all kind of group together, look like a triangular kind of plane right in through here. Then we have, lastly, the rhizorus over through here on top of the fascia of the masseter and, and coming over, curving over on top of the buccinator and attaching over through here. To get another six, but I think of them as five major pulleys. And the reason I think of them as five is because one has kind of been invisible to us and it's certainly kind of uh, underneath. So now my job is to clear up all everything I just said and make that a heck of a lot more um, under, understandable. Okay. So I wanted to get that kind of first part of it out of the way, out of the way and make this a lot more uh, clear and cleaner. So the first one we'll start with is the, the uh, levator labi superioris nasalis. Okay, levator labi superioris nasalis. Starting up and through here, 
Okay, smaller, thinner muscle cascading over this area. See how it comes in that cavity and coming down that zygomatic area to the maxilla structure through here, over and around, over, curves around the opening of the nasal cavity, curving through, okay? Coming on down and ending up, up here on the maxilla front frontal area. Really kind of on top of these curved structures of where the root bed of our teeth go. So it's originating here, curving on around, ending up here on the front part of the medial incisor teeth right in through, right in through there. So it's a nice little thin strand of longer, thinner strand of muscle form. In through here, I'll give it a little bit of form as well. And I think of all these as kind of like chewing gum, really rubbery, fibrous material. So there we are in three quarter, okay? Put a little shadow on there so you can really see it. In through here. And let's come around in our frontal view, in through here. So frontal three quarter right profile. Let's take it on over here. Attaches about right in through there, comes on down, cascades through almost disappears in this view, through down the angle of the zygomatic arch around, not overlapping, but around the opening of the nasal cavity, in through here, over, slinks around, gets thinner in this view, then comes back around and through it and attaches onto the maxilla, anterior part of the front part, certainly before the teeth. Then a very thin muscle structure. So that's number one of the five pulleys right in through there. Now, you know, I'm going to, uh, we have one over here too as well. Don't forget profile in through here. Now we have it profile over here, <clears throat> attaching here, coming down, nasal cavity area on the side of the nasion, over, slides down here, slides down across, and on the lateral side here of the nasal cavity, zygomatic maxilla area, and then coming on down a profile, this would start to get thinner and kind of just disappear into almost a line. Now there are two of them, each one on either side here and on the other side, attaching here, slinking down into there as well. Just be aware of that. So that's number one, what I call number one of the five uh, five pulleys, if you will. And the reason why the, all of these muscles help to lift the lip and mouth structure up, elevate, levate, or elevate upwards. Now there's a couple of muscles down here that depress or push down upon or pull the lip structure down in frowning, and we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Okay, now, there's, this is, this muscle's not included in the the five pulleys, but I want to I want to talk about it a little bit, and it's called the levator anguli oris, and it's a shorter muscle. It's about right here. I'm going to draw it in in this kind of maroon color here, here underneath, and we see it just a little bit here coming down. Let me draw it in three quarter first, and I'm going to keep it lighter because there's muscles. The levator labi superioris uh, comes on top of it. And so it would disappear, but it does interact with a muscle down here, the depressor anguli oris, together. This continues to lift and this continues to pull. So if you think about everything is lifting up, right, and lower, it's pulling down. So pulleys up, pulleys down, if you will, in that sense, okay? All right. So the levator anguli oris, oris, right, the mouth kind of a triangular shape, lighter shape, almost like a piece of chewing gum, about right in through here. That's how I see it as an artist. Here and here coming down in the frontal view, okay? We're gonna draw over it so we won't see it much. Here, coming down in the frontal view. Just as that zygomatic bone starts to kind of turn, cascade through, it sits right in through there. <clears throat> So I know it by form and shape and by its, its apparent approximate location, which is fine for artists. 
you know, if I was a doctor, I'd be even more specific. But we don't, we don't have to be. That's be careful on that. I don't think you want to get caught up. Unless you're a medical illustrator, I think that's different. And I'm not. So this is not for medical illustrators. They have to be even more exact than artists do. This is for artists and for drawing. We can be a little bit more relaxed that way. So the levator superior, uh, levator anguli oris right in through here. Okay, so we have their location through. It's going to be working with a depressor anguli oris, which is going to be down here a little bit later to get kind of a triangular. It's also called the triangularis as well. But this pulls down while this pulls up. Okay, all right, so we have <clears throat> in terms of our pulleys, there's pulley number one, right? This is the underneath of our pulley number two, the levator anguli. For us, right in through here, okay, right in through here, right. Our next pulley is the levator labi superioris, okay. It's going to be attaching along the zygomatic arch, right where the orbit ends. We come off here of our orbit, our eye orbit, right, about right in through here, and it's going to cover up the levator anguli oris. So don't get those two um, confused. So let's repeat that again. Levator anguli oris underneath levator labi, or labi, whichever you prefer. Levator labi superioris. Triangular, longer triangular muscle coming down, following down the maxilla, the zygomatic arch, ending and attaching lower down here to the uh, interior part, slightly, slightly uh, medial, medial here, lateral, interior, slightly over to this word, or to the side of it, if you will, right in through here. So right on top of that and over and then attaching right in through there. So there's a lot of labit, labiter muscles. A lot of them have that, matter of fact, the first three do. Levator labi superioris nasalis, levator anguli oris, levator labi superioris proper. Okay, with no nasalis. The nasalis is on that, that closer na nasal area in through here. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're learning these. You'll get to learn these pretty well and you just draw the shapes and I call them the five pulleys. This is pulley number two. I'll put two by there. That's pulley number two right in through there. Okay. Have that. Okay. Levator labi superioris. The frontal view here. Coming down and through. Getting thinner as we get to the end of the maxilla which I'll need to be defined a little bit further, right in through here, and the teeth would come down after that, right in through here, right in through there. Kind of contour these around a little bit. Okay, so we have that on the frontal view, three-quarter view in through here. sitting on top of that bony maxilla in through here. And this is filled in with fibro fatty tissue glands if there are nerve areas, fascia in through here. And then we have now the levator labi superioris. So even I have to stop and make sure I'm saying the right one. It's complex and it should be complex. It's difficult. So that's why we stop and and it lays right on top of the levator anguli oris, and we'll come all the way down, curve on through this muscle, curve on through, and end up attaching right there, and through, and through there as well. There we go. Put a little tone underneath that, tone underneath that, a little space in between. Give a little tone in through there. This is kind of our main one, isn't it? The three quarter. It's also the biggest. I like to do these big and bold, a little bit easier to, to kind of manipulate, especially with charcoal. <coughs> All right, so that's the second of our five pulleys right in through 
right in through there. And I might put a little bit of, start putting a little bit of light, a little bit of light on these as well. Right in through here. Maybe right in through here, coming down, coming down. <clears throat> okay. All right, so number three, pulley number three. Zygomaticus minor. Zygomaticus minor. Let's go find that. So Zygomaticus minor, let's find it. All right, so pulley number three. Zygomaticus minor is going to attach here, and it, it really has, uh, in the naming quotient of this, right, really feels, you know, connected to the zygomatic structure of the bone itself coming in, obviously, in through here. So that has a naming quality to it. Now there's a major and a minor. We're going to start first with the minor. It's a smaller strand of uh, muscle, and it's attached to, we're getting more lateral to the, the head, and so we're, we've started here, and now we're working our way across the zygomatic structure. So you can think of these pulleys really attaching along this orbital curve of the zygomatic arch, part of the maxilla, and then coming down and slinking over to the end of the maxilla through there. So zygomatic minor <clears throat> really happens about the end of the eye orbit, about right in through here, notches nicely in through here, then kind of slinks downward and curves and gets close to the levator or lay by superioris in through here. Smaller stranded muscle in through here, curves. Notice how they're long, tubular, curve to curve, and then down and over in through here. So we'll separate them by a nice dark area in through here, coming over. And we'll feel that zygomaticus minor in through here. So that's pulley number three in through there. Pulley number Pulley number three. <clears throat> Put a little light tone on it here, a little light tone on it there, and then let's go find it now. Put a little shadow here, a little shadow here. Let's go find it on the frontal view, right in through this area of our structure, coming over and through and down, curving over, curving over here, gets a little bit more curved in through and comes on and then finishes up right around this this area. So zygomaticus minor here and then zygomaticus minor in through here. Notice we get that nice angle of the zygomatic bone and through here, that hyoid angle we get here, here, and also here covering over. It's not on this side. We're still relatively in the front, but we're getting right as that plane changes on the cheek in through here. You can call these cheekbone muscles too if you want. Zygomaticus minor up and through and then it kind of curves over like so and then down we give that kind of curvy kind of structure to it zygomaticus minor in through there okay all right so that's pulley number three pulley number three then we have pulley number four as we start to get a little bit more over to the side the lateral side here of our, uh, our zygomatic structure. So zygomatic major is going to attach right in through here, curve down and come on over to the maxilla. And I'll show you that. So let's take a look at, at uh, pulley number four. Attaching over here, past, right over through here, attaching here. A little bit larger structured muscle than the zygomatic minor, hence the name tone. The name, uh, the name pronouncement in through here. So zygomatic major over through here. Decent gap between the two here. Curved over, curved over through here, and a little bit attaching more onto the side over and through this area. So down and over, coming over like so. I'll show that line. I'll kind of keep it transparent so we can see all that a little bit working together. So there's a tube coming down, right? Pulley number four, like so. Coming down and through, I'll put a little light on it so we can see it too as well. <clears throat> Pulley number four, zygomaticus, zygomaticus major. Major, minor, major, minor. These all make up, especially these three, 
make up this triangular plane that we see on the figure often. Keep that in mind quite often. So I'm going to draw that over here, zygomaticus major, in the frontal view right over here as it, it tends to congregate back here in the zygomatic arch where it starts to turn, really turn back towards the side plane of the head in through here nicely and then attaching on that maxilla ball about right up in through here above the buccinator a little bit. There we go. Zygomaticus major right in through. Right in through here. Pulley number four. Number four. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sharpen my pencil a little bit and we'll keep keep talking as you can you might want this might be a chance for you to catch up a little bit. So it's complex in through here. There's a lot of naming. The names will fade in time and you'll have to go back and refresh like I have to do. Uh, but the forms, if you practice them constantly, especially through living anatomy and draw them all the time, you'll start to see them show up on the model and that's what we'll look at later with expressions in the head, the face. I um, uploaded a video not too long ago of one of our models here at our school, Brian, with facial expressions kind of as a pre uh, um, foreshadowing, if you will, of uh, looking at facial expressions. Because all of these muscles play a role, especially these pulleys. These pulleys are integral and important to giving uh, expression, silent expression to human emotion, to human interaction. And we have so many muscles within this area that it, it, that it, uh, it certainly becomes a complex set of uh, drawing problems for the, for the artist as well. Okay, sharpen back up. And remember, these all, these all fall along here as well. So just think about where they're located here, how they're located and inserted, and following all along this structure, this rounded ball, you know, coming across zygomaticus minor in through here, attaches over through here, and then major right over through here, attaching over and through there. So now we have pulley, uh, we have our uh, four pulleys, but we need one more, right? We need number five. Uh, let me make sure I put zygomaticus uh, major over through here. So attaching more now over on the side of the uh, zygomatic arch, right? Curving down a little bit, giving a little bit more of a gap, and then coming over here to the side over here, like, like so. That bone. that would overlap the buccinator in that in that viewpoint too, uh, as well. I'll kind of pull that in, just some darken through, darken through there, so you see it kind of coming around this area too as well. Right. Okay. Now, lastly, we have the risorius. So this uh, little muscle sits on top of the fascia and uh, the structure of the masseter. Okay, so here we have the masseter here. And it sits on top about halfway to almost three quarters of the way down, right in through this little area. And it's going to curve up and over and come on through and sit down on uh, the area of the modialis where all these muscles come through. So it's not really attached to the maxilla. If it is, I haven't seen it. I might have missed it, but I don't think so. But it's curving around through here, right? And it becomes the fifth pulley, number five, right into here. A little bit longer, stronger strand coming in through here. It attaches on top of and around and in through this highly complex area right in through here, the risorius, right in through here. That becomes your fifth, fifth pulley right in through there. Put that down, kind of give it a shadow on top of that through there. Risorius over here on top of the masseter. About halfway down, curving across and ending on top of these areas. Again, it gives that extra pull, grinning to our structures. It helps in facial expression. And probably because of its location, I would assume also in chewing, mastication as well. And through there, okay? Risorius right here, pulley number five. 
coming across like so. Okay, mandible here, fatty tissue. This is an open area. Don't get don't get um, scared by that. There's less muscle there. There's fatty tissue through here, nerve tissue in through there. And so risorius. That's our fifth pulley right in through here. So what are our pulleys? The risorius here. Can you name them? In this area, kind of a flat muscle in through here. Flatten down. Risorius zygomaticus major, zygomaticus minor, levator labi superioris with the levator anguli oris, remember underneath it. And then we have the levator labi superioris, and I call it nasalis. The true name of it is levator labi superioris aliquae nasal. Nasal, I believe, and that's that's a lot. So I just call I really call it just the nasalis for my own, for me. But I want to be a little bit more, certainly a little bit more accurate. Now remember, we have the um, lateral cartilage here. We have the, coming out of the nose. We have cartilage, but there's also muscle that flaps over, pretty tight fashion muscle that just that shoots over the nose too as well. But I'm not going to really get get too deep into into that. There we go. And the orbit starts over there. So we have our five pulleys now. Let me get the last pulley over here, the risorius, over and through here, about located right through here, curving on around and ending on top of the buccinator in this general area, right in through as artists. That's probably not completely exact. I don't care if you want to be more exact, go for it. But right here is enough to know with that fifth pulley. One, two, three, four, five. And just remember that the levator anguli Oris is underneath it. Let me get my redder pencil right here underneath a little bit more stout muscle showing kind of through running right through there. That's going to play off the depressor anguli oris, which we'll get to uh, here in a moment. So I just kind of want to kind of tie this drawing up a little bit. This is the showcase drawing for sure on this side. Put a little bit of light over here just to give it a little bit more expression. <clears throat> so it's complex, but it's very manageable with, with separating these forms out. And all of these muscles help to pull as they contract and you give expression, they're all pulling upward, right? They're all giving this feeling of contraction and moving and moving the lip and the mouth structure, really on both sides when you smile. So we're doing it this way, remember the risorius coming over through here, but it's also pulling everything back right in that direction. So it's pretty particularly important in facial structure and also human expression capability to have that working for us back and up. A little bit because everything down here the mental labial group here the depressor anguli oris uh, really uh, pull and frown everything down and then the modialis right in through here this really with a grouping of more muscles it's more complex here than I'm going to show you um, because I don't want to get too bogged down I just remember this as the mental labial group or the chin muscles and they're trying to kind of in nature and orient in origin and I think that's more than enough you can break these down into a set of I think there's about eight more muscles, and I don't think we need that to be quite frank with you. Same thing with the brow a little bit. Um, I just draw what I see, and I know there are forms in through there. So that may be limiting. If you want to go on further, you can, but I don't because um, I want to get to the ones that are, that are the most important for us, I think, as, as artists. Just remember, this is the filtrum, that muscle form over, that cut in through there on top. We'll get into that deeper in a little bit a little bit later that's the filtrum area right in through there all right so let's go now to the depressor anguline uh, oris and we're going to start thinking about we've we've worked on upward pull pulling upward right now we're going to work on the downward pull of the lip mouth structure and the muscle structure to give human expression that way too as well. So I'm not going to get in deeply into teeth. Let me flesh out a little bit further the dentition here, and we'll get we're going to get deeper into teeth later on um, with the uh, 
with the, the forms. And again, I'm just sketching from the skeleton. What I'll do is I'll just find the tooth line between the inside where the incisors end and kind of slightly overlap the other incisors getting over to the canine forms, which get more lateral, about right up, up and through here. Yeah, like so. Canine forms in through, and then back to the premolars, and then the molars will wind up getting way back in the mouth structure. So I'm just going to give us that line in through there, this curved line. Remember that ball structure, and then it gets horseshoe shape as it gets flatter on in through there as well. We get to the furrow here of the the jawbone, the straightening out through here in profile. We see how it straightens out riding through there. That's the furrow of the chin. It gets straighter before we get that chin angle of the mandible coming out like so. So we see it here. We see it kind of straighten, sometimes undercut. I feel like I see it as a little bit more of an undercut sometimes. So we see that here in a three-quarter like so. It's an undercut and I'll kind of just give a little shading toning to that down here and in the furrow of the chin area. And then on top of that is the mental labial group. Okay, well, now what I mean by that is the grouping of chin muscles that give us a kind of triangular depression. And they can, they can contract and bring the forms of the lip mouth downward uh, as well. Okay, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to get deeper into them. I just group them. When I can group together, I like to do that, but when I need to separate, at times I'll separate for the sake of, of making it understandable. My job here, I think, is to present it for you that's manageable, it's understandable, and you can practice it because you don't need to know everything, every single aspect of it, unless you just go that deep into it. So the mental labial group grouping in through here, like so, kind of a triangular bell shape if you will, in through here. Same thing over through here after the furrow. Here's the frontal part, so it looks kind of like this form of grouping of muscles. Wider out through here in perspective, lay over that soft part of the, of the cheek, kind of curve around like so. There we go. Buccinator in through here. Make this, try to make it pretty, right? Pretty drawing to make Good, good diagrams. Make, try to make your, your technical drawings for yourself, um, for others. If you do that, try to make them pretty. Try to make them nice to look at, and people want to learn more. I learned that. Sometimes when I was a student, I just did really, kind of really fast, and sometimes, I wouldn't say bad, but crummy diagrams, and, and they've gotten better. Now that I teach, too, that's part of my professional practice, I kind of have to, don't I? All right, so we have that. Just remember that these are everything on this side is on this side. Don't that's all together. I want to make sure that that's clear. Just for the sake of time, we're doing one side. Mental labial group furrowing here and then over, kind of fleshing out in through here, kind of flattens out right in through here. Mental labial grouping, right in through, right in through there. Okay, so let's go on now to the kind of companion naming of from the levator anguli orus here right over through and here okay coming down we're starting to get a little bit more lateral off medial or off center this way to the depressor anguli orus okay down and through or kind of a triangular muscle in through here and located okay right here's the levator anguli orus located down this way, close to the mental labial grouping, very triangular kind of a feeling for a muscle right in through here. Okay, like so. Feeling its way through here. And it levator anguli oris, depressor anguli oris, and has a triangular kind of feel to this muscle right in through. Here, so I'm gonna draw it in red first and I'll go back over it. It helps to pull down now the lip mouth area, pulling down the lip and mouth area of our forms this way. So now we get frowning 
we get that expression too. Sadness, depression, maybe anger, yelling, uh, screaming, if you, whatever we need to uh, communicate within that, within that range of emotions we get. And these can be very subtle. We have such, such control over these areas, you'd be surprised from a range of, of very expressive, uh, extreme uh, motion to um, very uh, uh, elegant and um, very subtle range of human emotion too as well. So if you want to frown, if you uh, are uh, uh, going to frown, you're going to use your depressor anguli oris on both sides here and here. So it attaches along this mandible here and then it comes up. It comes up and attaches to, and this is one you should already know a little bit, the orbicularis oris, up and through here, coming up and over. Remember the orbicularis oris, so I'm going to draw that for us. Now this attaches over, remember that I'm going to draw it in red, so this could get really, really confusing. Remember that muscle, that beautiful rhythmic quality of muscle coming over down and around so it attaches up and through the try and get the uh, depressor angulite oris up and through and over to the orbicularis oris muscle kind of right in through here a little bit I had to go back and review my notes and kind of double check to make sure I got it where it attaches to up and through did it attach to the bone the maxilla bone or does it attach to the muscle on top of that. Now these get all grouped together so it gets a little confusing. Right in through there, right in through and it attaches to the muscle in through here, somewhere in through there. Remember, I'm not a medical illustrator nor do I want to be, so I don't have to be totally exact talking about what makes form in drawing. I know some people don't like that, that's okay. You can give the video a dislike, that's okay. Um, but what I'm talking about is understanding for artists about writing through here, the depressor anguli oris or the DAO. That's a, a lot of times I'll just say the DA, the DAO, DAO. Writing through here up and over and attaches to the orbicularis oris muscle. So I'm going to draw this darker and through here, like so. Coming around. Really works on pulling and frowning. So does the mental labial group. Pulling and frowning down. Pulling the mouth down. Pulling the mouth down, right? Over through here in our profile view. Pulling the mouth down here. Pulling the mouth up there. Pulleys. Really all of them, but I like to call it the five pulleys here. Right here, right? That's my five, my big group of five. That's how I remember it. Come up with your own system. But these are pulleys too, really, down below here. Remember, there's nothing along here as much. It's more fatty tissues, mandible bone area. Just be careful of that. It's going to be important. Attaches right into there to the orbicularis oris. Along this area, I'm going to keep this pinkish and give you that rounded muscular view in through here, across. Right, in through there, there's the philtrum area that it attaches to. Now the lip's a different structure, so it wouldn't include the lip, the labium superioris and inferioris, so basically the lower, upper and lower lip, actually. And through there, and down below, covering through here, the furrowed area of the orbicularis oris, and then up past the mental labial group, and then on top of and in, integrated into the depressor anguli oris and around to the buccaneer, integrated into that as well. Sits in through here. Well, that's a lot, isn't it? It's quite a bit going on. All right, so can we come over here now? We have the <coughs> depressor anguli oris coming over and attaching through to the circular muscle forms of the orbicularis oris. You know I'm thinking about the names when I have to, when I stop and I'm really, 
<laughs> and I have to remember a little bit too if there's so much, especially when you're teaching. You know, later on I just draw and you learn these forms where they're at. You separate all these forms out and you draw them. You know, these are very thin kind of slivers and cuts of pieces of gum. This is the masseter's thicker, right? So is the buccinator, roundy kind of form. Rasorius is a flat kind of form that's too rounded there. You get that idea, and then you just draw them enough, and you remember them as, as the forms, and then you have to go back and learn their names, unless you really, you want to be really, really accurate, and that's fine. I'm being more accurate than I normally ever would be for myself, and that's a good thing, because I have to teach, teach this too as well. So I'm not being casual with it. I'm being uh, understandably cautious that um, what we know here is important for artists and not necessarily medical illustrators and or doctors for sure because I want my doctors knowing more about anatomy than I do because they can't draw. I've never met a doctor that I know that's a really excellent draft person. Medical illustrator is pretty cool. It's another great profession for those who have a very scientific analytical kind of approach but may not, you know, in love drawing but may not be fine art or, you know, illustrative. So the orbicularis or oris, and this covers all of that, believe it or not. So this would actually, and I'm drawing it kind of in reverse, because this would cover all of this, all of these muscle forms, but that wouldn't really serve my purpose at this point, at this point in time. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't cover those up, but it does. The orbicularis oris here, right coming over, sheathing over underneath, and up and over, drops down a little bit right in through running right through there. So the double O orbicularis orus. And notice how that's a, it, uh, everything starts to repeat orus down here. Depressor anguli orus, levator anguli orus, depressor and elevator. Depressor means to push, or um, in this case, pull, pull downward. Levator, elevate and bring upward too as well. So I think that gets, hopefully gets more of the, the, uh, the clear message or the point home of what what we're trying to do here as well. Okay. Alright, so I think we're we're about squared away, believe it or not. That's a lot, isn't it? Quite a bit. And we'll practice all this in a living anatomy. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go on to now to looking at teeth, looking at lips, proper going in deeper with shape and talk to you a little bit about what they're made of a little bit more, right? And then I want to go a little bit deeper, uh, you know, like I said, into teeth and also just look at the shape of the tongue and give you some, some hints on that and, and really where it's attached to and what we really see of both the teeth and the lips and the gum. We don't, unless you're doing really close up views in some fine art way, of the mouth, the teeth, and the gums, especially the teeth and the gum, right? Um, you, we don't really see a lot of that, but there's some helpful tips, tips to know about what their shapes and their forms are, the teeth and the wedge of the uh, tongue, very important, and some pitfalls there that we want to try to avoid when we draw them because we see them far less than you ever think think we would quite quite a bit actually quite frankly so um, I see a lot of bad uh, believe it or not teeth and sort of slightly tongue tongue kind of drawing it's the same kind of problem we draw the eyes whites of the eyes teeth are real, real, rarely as white uh, as we want to imagine that they are unless you're you know a celebrity um, they're they've been colored by time by the food we eat, with the, the coffee and tea that we drink, and just the usage of them as well. So keep that in mind, unless you really go out and make an issue of coloring, coloring these structures, the teeth, etc. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the form of them as well, what they look like. They're basically cylindrical kind of roots and at a, at a block and kind of an end, and then we can modify the two of them to each one that we look at. So that's what we'll do next. Let's go on now to the dentition or the teeth and get back to that horseshoe shape, right, of um, the, uh, the, the maxilla skull area of the head. And then we'll look at the wedge, the triangular wedge 
rectangular triangular wedge of the tongue. And then uh, we'll, we'll draw those some, and then after we look at that, then we'll go on to uh, some living anatomy and take some poses where we find the, most of these structures within the pose and look for some of that when it's active. And then lastly, we'll do a couple of studies where we just put it all together with light and value and, and full on kind of a, a sketchy finish. So that's what's uh, coming up next. All right, so stay tuned. If you made it this far, hallelujah, you're doing good. And uh, I'll see you in the next section, right, of this video. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.